everybody what's going on Eric here and you're looking at the gem wannabe kit guitar and what I got going on here is just a few photos of some of the poly that's been added to it now I gotta sand it down again and add some more poly and I'm gonna end up just going through the process what you're looking at there is a the stem and you can see how there's glitter and how it fades from a dark color into a light color with the edges being darker to kind of give it a three-dimensional look so enjoy the video All right, so here's the body. I'm gonna have a sit down. And I'm not, it's not really difficult to do this. It's just that you wanna have a nice flat surface. You wanna keep uh, your, whatever you're using as a sanding block clean as far as any particles, debris, or anything that could get in between the paper and the block itself. Because if there's any type of a bump or anything that's underneath your block, your sanding block, you're actually gonna put that bump into the wood or the finish of whatever you're doing. So this is nice and smooth right now. Feels really good actually. It's almost like I could just hit it with the uh, a little bit of rubbing polish and uh, that's it, it'll be done. But I wanna build this up this layer more than what it is. So here I got a piece of 800 grit sandpaper. Just cut some strips off. Make sure there's nothing on the bottom of your sanding block. In this case, I'm using a pencil eraser. And what I'm doing is just folding it over a little bit, starting in one corner and working my way completely around, making sure I'm sanding flat, even, and uh, changing the paper so uh, every so often as needed. Because this poly will clog up your paper. And I'm using wet dry paper for automotive. So I'm kind of doing small swirling motions. I'm not doing like really large side to side and as you can see it builds up pretty quick on here so I just rub down my shorts and go back to town again you could see you could feel you can hear the difference in the finish when you're sanding this and it give you a nice dull finish at the end I could use the monster block that I have made by 3M for automotive use to do this, but to be honest with you, I don't need it. It's a little bit overkill. In order to keep your surface nice and flat so it looks nice when you put your clear on and it doesn't have a wave to it or anything else, you just want to make sure you're even all the way around when you're sanding. Cleaning your sandpaper every so often. I'm applying a little bit of pressure, not much. Now if I was comfortable enough that I thought there was enough layers on here, I'd hit it with the 800, then I hit it with the uh, 15 or 1000, 1500, and then I hit it with the 2000, and then give it a little bit of a polish after that, and it'd be done or just hit it with the 1000 grit and 1500 and 2000 and then polish that polish that out. Now you want to go overlap the edges but not go on an angle. If the edges the surface is flat and there's no angle on the edge, don't make one. See, this clogs up pretty fast on the paper, and then we end up switching to a clean spot. You can hear it cut pretty good. But like I said, it clogs up real fast. Nice and smooth, no bumps, no high spots, no waviness, no nothing. Feels really, really nice. Make sure you get all the surface. Because again, you're going to be covering all of this surface with a new layer. 
So you want to sand all the surface to give that new layer something to bite into. Swap out to a clean spot again. When you start getting to a curve or an angle or something like that, don't sweat it. Just follow that angle. Follow that curve. And the paper. Make sure the bottom of this is nice and clean. Again, follow the angle. Basically, this whole half of the guitar is done. Just follow the angle of the wood and you'll be all right. Now what I'm looking for is a nice dull finish. I'm using the paper dry, not, not wet sanding this. That's part of the reason why it's clogging up really fast too is because I'm not wet sanding. Wet sanding. And you want to get all the way up to the edge without going through the finish you already have on there. Don't sit in one spot too long. Let the paper do the work. Oh, and by the way, make sure your hands are clean, that you have, don't have a lot of oil on your hands, you don't have a lot of dirt or anything else. Wash your hands before doing this. This way you're not rubbing your dirty, grubby hands into the finish because when you reapply a finish on here, um, you don't want to have any dirt or anything in your hands that's going to stop the other finish that you're putting on, the new finish that you're putting on, to uh, not do its job and dry and look pretty.
Now, if you start seeing or feeling any type of rolls getting up underneath the paper, it looks like a little, little long rolled up, uh, uh, basically it's the poly. We call it corn rolls. It means the poly is not fully cured yet and you're just making these little rolls and it's not really sanding it, it's kind of just smearing it a little bit. And that corn roll can actually do damage to the surface that you're sanding. If it gets a lot underneath the paper, you're actually kind of like making marks in the finish with those corn rolls. So wait before you end up doing the sanding, you know, get the finish 24 hours. Poly ends up drying pretty quick. That's about it. She's pretty much sanded down. Now like I said, I keep some of these cans of compressed air so they come in very handy for this next step. That one's about empty. As you can see, not so shiny anymore. Now, I don't think that the compressed air is going to basically remove all of the problems and dust and crap that might have gotten on your surface. You still want to wipe it down. Like I said, bounty paper towels. Once you feel confident that your surface is nice and dust free, go ahead and start hitting it with the poly. I think I'm pretty good with that. And again, that's all I'm using. Wipe on poly. Great for sandwiches too. Now with the paper towels, I'm not using the real textured side. I'm using more of the flat surface side. Fold it over a few times. And try to stay away from the cut edge of the paper towel. So when I fold it, I don't have the cut, cut edge on any side of the surface that I'm going to end up wiping onto the body. So the cut edge is on this side, and on this side, I'm going to use this part over here to wipe onto the body. Make sure there's no dust on here. Pour a little on a rag. Now that amount there will cover the whole body. 
And when you get to the edges and stuff, don't put pressure because you don't want no runs going around the edges. So I just skim real close to the edge. And as you can see, there's a difference. Brings out this top almost looks like a flame maple. Now if you take a look at it, you see maybe a few fuzzies in it or some bubbles in it or something. Just go over it real lightly and slow. And if you got a beard or a mustache or losing your hair or anything else, try not to lean over the top of this too much because you might get one of those pieces of hairs in your finish. Alright, so I think I'm looking pretty good. As you can see, it's got a gloss back to it again. And as it dries, it'll level out. If there's any bubbles in there, some of the bubbles will go away. But if you go nice and easy with it, it'll level itself out, and you won't have any bubbles at all. So right now, I'm going to let this set up. In about three, two, two or three hours, I'll come back to it and check it out. Check it out. In three and two, three or two hours, it'll be pretty much uh, dry. If you want to say anything, and then I can go on to uh, just checking it out to see what kind of if there's any particles or anything in the surface um, or in the finish. And after that, um, tomorrow I'll be sanding it again and putting another coat. Again, three to two, two to three hours, it'll be dry to the touch, but may not be cured all the way. So that's why I give it 24 hours. You could do that if you want to. If not, best of luck. But I've been having pretty good luck with it. And as you can see, it's nice and glossy again. So this gets moved off to the side. That can dry. And I'm going to start working on the other kit that I've got. Start lining up some parts on there, and I have to route out the opening for the um, the type of Floyd Rose or, or whatever tremolo that's on there. I have to route that out a little bit so it fits properly, and that's it. Enjoy. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Sorry, I didn't, sorry if I bored you by putting on rub-on poly, and, uh, you know, yay. I know. It's loads of fun, isn't it? Anyways, take care. Take it easy.